Hi, my name is John Clayton. Welcome to our bass lesson and bass tips. Uh, here are a few points on that great sounding interval on the bass, the tenth. First of all, what is a tenth and why do they call it a tenth? Basically, it's looking at the root, the, the first note of the scale. Let's take a major scale, for instance, uh, a C scale. And we'll take each one of those members. We'll call the first note that I started on one. Second note, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's keep going. Nine and ten. So if I play the root, which is down here, and I play the tenth, this E natural here is a tenth away from the root. Okay. So what I do, uh, if I want to play them together, I've got to find another place. If that's my C, and this is my E, uh, my fingers aren't quite long enough to play both of them at the same time. Yeah, I can use my chin. How about that? Does that work? Oh, that hurts. Um, but I can play this C on another string. I can play that same sounding note, that same octave, there. And now it allows me to reach over with my other finger and play that E natural. So, there are a few things that I think about when I'm playing tenths. Um, first of all, that's a major tenth. Remember we played a major scale? So that's our major scale. If I wanted to do a minor scale, then that means when I play the tenth, that's not going to be an E natural. It's going to be an E flat. So I will play the C natural here. Instead of playing the E natural, I'll play an E flat. But I can probably access that E flat a little bit easier by going with my third finger there. That's the major, that's the minor. So I like to try different fingerings on different strings. For instance, for instance, if I'm going to play an E flat um, major chord, say I want to play the tenth of an E flat scale, the root and the tenth, I might go, and that works great. Or if I'm going to play a D, you know, the tenth and the root is going to be a D, then I might play the D and the F sharp this way playing together that way. So now I've got the open string D and I've got the F sharp here. Same thing with uh, an open A and a C sharp. That's another tenth. Same thing with an E and a G sharp. So, and then I could of course do all that with minor too. I can go D natural and F natural. Same thing with... So it really cool sounds, uh, the tenth. I really love that interval. Um, Things to remember when playing the tenths, hold your notes down firmly. You probably noticed that I always try to keep my fingers curved because I'm going to have the most strength when I'm doing that. I'm going to have less strength when my fingers are flat, when they're flat trying to play notes. I'm not going to have as much strength and I'm not going to have as much control over the note. So I always try to keep my fingers whenever possible curved, but don't freak out if it doesn't work out that way. You know, if your fingers end up becoming a little bit more flat, that's fine. And tenths are a perfect example of where that is probably going to be the case. Yes, you can play with curved fingers, but it might feel a little better if you flatten your fingers out in order to play the tenths. So you can see that this finger's kind of flat. It looks kind of funky, but it's okay. So sometimes we bend the rules in order to make music and in order to make music, music with our bodies feeling comfortable. So that's going to be a lot more comfortable for me instead of having my fourth finger sort of curved the way I normally... If I'm playing like this... Now that makes sense, but if I'm doing this, I've got such a wide uh, spance here that I've got to cover that I need to sometimes flatten out my fingers, and that's okay. Um, Push firmly with the fingers of the left hand so that your notes will ring. 
keep in mind that, and this is something we can talk about in another base tips uh, moment as well, but our left fingers are taking the place of that piece of ebony right there, that little piece of wood is called the nut. And that's what the strings come over and go all the way down to the bridge. So this is the most open, ringing, singing sound you're ever going to get on the bass. When you and I put our fingers down on a string, we're essentially taking the place of that nut. So that's why it's important for us to really push firmly. I often recommend imagining feeling the notes that you're playing with the bone of your finger, but not to the point of pain. Really important. Not to the point of pain. Also not to the point that you can't uh, move your fingers freely or shift your uh, positions to, to different positions freely and easily. So we have to push firmly with our left fingers so the notes are going to ring a long time. Like that. That's the idea. So I try, try to do that. The other thing is, when I'm playing normally, I try to keep, and even with tenths, I try to keep some space between the palm of my hand and the string. So I don't lay my fingers flat on the strings when I'm playing. Uh, instead, I get my fingers up, almost as if some type of people like to imagine a ball in the palm of your hand when you're playing the bass. So the idea is to keep that roundness going so that you can control the notes with more ease and more focus. So I hope you've enjoyed our bass tip, our bass lesson. Thanks so much for joining me.